Turn with me to the book of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter number 8, and back into that series of wisdom. And we started that mainly at the, the beginning of this year. It, uh, I thought about 2024, getting into this new year, I, I personally need wisdom. And by the way, in reality, we all need wisdom. We've gone through uh, seven chapters so far. Tonight will be the eighth chapter of the book of Proverbs. Remember Proverbs chapter 1, how to avoid the pitfalls of life. Uh, chapter 2, staying straight in a crooked world. Proverbs 3, wisdom is wonderful. Proverbs 4, please get wisdom. Uh, Proverbs chapter 5, wisdom's warning against adultery. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, wisdom's four lessons. Proverbs chapter 7, you remember that a few weeks ago? Adultery, a path of ruin or path to ruin. And uh, tonight, the call of wisdom, the call of wisdom. Now, me as uh, dad and lots of kids, uh, through the years I've had to call my children. For example, at church, somehow after the church service, they seem to be zooming around. There's something zooming around out there. It's a, a fox or something right there trying to get in. It's probably one of the Nettisheim kids. And so, uh, praise the Lord, my kids will go out and I'll be ready to leave. And uh, I, you know, I have no idea where they're at. So I go out in, into the churchyard right there. Normally it's late and not as many people around. And my call will be whistling go, really loud. And all of a sudden they know, come running to daddy. Brother Randy has scared me a lot of times with the Brother Randy call. And Miss Gracie doesn't do that as much as he used to. Woo woo! And something like that, I don't know. And uh, you, you think about the call when we're at my house. My, my kids will pretend to be wolves sometimes. Oh, woo woo! Uh, they'll pretend to be cows. Moo, moo. They'll pretend to be horses. Nay, nay, not moo, but nay. Uh, they'll pretend to be frogs, ribbit, ribbit, and they'll pretend, pretend to be chickens. Buck, 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 buck. That's a rooster, I think, right there. I don't know. Uh, but th there's a call. Everybody has a call right here. Now, wisdom has a call. Let's all stand, if you can, with me for the reading of God's Word. We'll read the first five verses together, and wisdom uh, has a call. Starting in verse number one, I'll read. We'll read every other verse. Doth not wisdom cry, but understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. Verse 5, read with me. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Now you can continue. Verse 6. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. And it continues on and on. It's the call of wisdom. And the call of wisdom, it's for everybody. It's for the simple. It's for even the fools. Wisdom is available, and wisdom has a call. Now, we have a job. Wisdom is calling. Wisdom is crying out. Wisdom is, he's going like that, saying, hey, pay attention to me. Come, come get me. Uh, I'm available. But you're going to notice that we need to hear that call. We need to open up our hearts and our minds to the call of wisdom. I need wisdom. How many of you need wisdom? We all do. So let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to bless. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Such a good truth. It's your word. And uh, very similar in some ways to Proverbs chapter number one. But you'll often give us the same truth in a, in a slightly different perspective because we need it. We need to be reminded of it. Help us to be Christians who listen up and hear the call of wisdom. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. The call of wisdom. Doth not wisdom cry? It's a, it's a question. Doth not wisdom cry? An understanding put forward voice? The answer is yes and yes. Wisdom is calling. Wisdom is calling crying out. Understanding is putting forth her voice. And uh, 
you remember a few weeks ago I got up and I walked on there crying out as wisdom and people walked by. But, but you have to understand, wisdom is crying out for you and me. It's available. It's not just for me. It's not just for you. It's for the, the entire world. People in Chesapeake, people in Hampton Roads, people in Virginia, people in the United States, people overseas in Europe, in Africa, in Asia, in the Middle East. Wisdom is crying out. And you look at this. She standeth, in verse 2, in the top of high places. By the way, in the place of the path, she crieth. She's loud at the gates, at the entry of the city, and at the coming into the doors. Now watch in verse 4. Look at this. This is very important. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to, what does it say? The sons of man. The, the sons of man. That, that's saying wisdom is available to everybody. That's important for you to understand. Wisdom is available for everybody. Wisdom is available for everybody. Now, we know that. I've said that. It's important for you to understand that. It's available to you. It's available to me. Some people would say, well, you know, I, I get it. Wisdom's available for you, pastor, and you, you folks at the old Chesapeake Baptist Church. But uh, what about me? I don't, I don't know about that. Look at this next verse right there in, in verse number five. Oh, ye simple, ye simple understand wisdom. Uh, wisdom is available. The cry of wisdom, the call of wisdom is not just for everybody, but, but specifically it reminds you it's for the simple. The simple. The simple, uh, you, you begin to think about the, the simple, it's the plain and ordinary. I, I think a preacher a few weeks ago talked about the IQ of somebody, and I was listening to them, and I was thinking, man, the IQ. And they said, yeah, I, I have an IQ, or my dad has the IQ of 140. And I have no idea what an IQ is, but, uh, you know, if they have a 140, I probably have a 73. And uh, that's what I know. And so I need to know and need to understand that the wisdom is available for me, the simple one. And so somebody who's out there who's simple, God, God loves them. God cares for them. God's got a plan for them. God's uh, saying, hey, wisdom's available for you. Look at that next verse right there, or that verse 5. Oh, ye simple, understand wisdom. And then it says, oh, ye Fools, O oh ye fools, be of an understanding heart. Uh, the call of wisdom is not just for everybody, specific for the, the simple also, but also for the fools. Fools. One who, uh, in the dictionary, a fool is one who is destitute of reason or of the common powers. They don't have much of an intellect, you might say, of understanding. Then it's said in there, an idiot. Uh, wisdom calls out to the idiots, too. And uh, I met a man this week. I went to uh, a little thing where the governor was in Chesapeake, and I got invited that, to that. I appreciate that. Our city council member, Brother Whitaker, I appreciate it. I went to, to this, uh, this little restaurant where the governor's going to be in Chesapeake, and I walked in there, and man, there's a lot of people. And uh, I don't know if I fit in too well there, and I, I walked over, and there's these seats, and there's this row right there, so I said, can I sit down here? And the people said, nobody's sitting there, go ahead. And I, I sat down and immediately, and by the way, I had my Bible, carrying my Bible. And uh, boy, immediately this man begins to, he's, he's loud. He's got a buttons on there of marijuana, different things. He's loud. And uh, you know, there's a lot of people in there, but he's loud. And he's looking at me, I'm, right ne I'm like right next to him. And uh, he begins to tell me his life story. And he's loud. He's very loud. I believe that I need to be able to smoke my pot. I need to be able to smoke my weed. I don't like Governor Yunkin. And he won't let me smoke my weed. He's against it. And I'm like, oh, okay. That's great. That's great. That's great. I, I, uh, great. And he's loud like that. I said, well, I'm a preacher. I believe the Bible. And uh, all of a sudden, after a few seconds, I maybe wasn't as spiritual as you. There was a couple seats down there. I, I moved over a few, <laughs> which I did. And then all of a sudden, as people, more people came in, all of a sudden, this guy looked at me and says, would you scoot over so we can have more people sit here? I'm like, oh. So I got pushed back over by him again. And there he is. You know what he wanted to talk about? Marijuana. I believe it's right. We got to smoke it. It's never hurt anybody. And I began to say, I said, well, I believe the Bible, and the Bible's against it. And, he said, and then he, all of a sudden he says, no, man, marijuana's in the Bible. And he's that loud. He's loud. I'm, marijuana's in the Bible. I said, well, here's my Bible. Show me where marijuana's in the Bible. Uh, 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 I don't know, but I got a friend, and he'll show you. He'll show you that marijuana's in the Bible. 
And he's just loud, loud. I tried to give him the gospel. I tried to tell him about the Lord, and he was angry. He was upset, and uh, he, he thought the Bible was written by man, that it's a terrible book that puts people in bondage. And he said, marijuana never hurt anybody. I said, well, I grew up in Colorado. It's a pretty good place to live. They legalized marijuana, and I've been there recently. It's not so good. Oh, you don't blame that on the marijuana. And loud, 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 loud. You know what, God? Put me there to talk to that idiot. <laughs> he did. He really did. And I tried. I had my patience. I, I, won't even, I shouldn't even tell you what I did. He was so loud. He was like, I know this. I like this. I said, I said, you know what? You really remind me of somebody in the Bible. He says, who? I said, well, I want you to look it up. It's in Isaiah chapter 14. Mark that down. And later on today, read Isaiah chapter 14. You're just like a guy in the Bible. He said, okay, I'll look it up later. <laughs> if you don't know what that one is, you look it up later and uh, you'll realize. But, but there's a lot of idiots in the world today. Amen. I've been one. I've been one. But somebody opened up the book, the Bible, and showed me that wisdom is available for me, that fool, that idiot, and it changed my life. We go over to this next portion, if you will, in verse number six. It says the first word, look at it. Hear, you see that? Hear, say it with me. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. We, and I put in there, we really should open up our ears and listen to wisdom. We, we really should. I'm imperfect, but God's not. And God's book is glorious. It's wonderful. Wisdom is glorious. It's wonderful. It's not from me. It's from above. And that Bible is full of wisdom. I try my best to say, thus saith the Lord, preach the word of God. As imperfect as I do, but we ought to open our hearts and our minds and our, our lives to wisdom. People immediately, they see the Bible. They don't even... Marijuana is in the Bible. Where? Later on, I met the guy who, who, who said, you know what he said? Here's the guy who's going to show you where marijuana is in the Bible. I said, hey, uh, show me where marijuana is in the Bible. He says, well, I did a thing, a study, and back in the original Hebrew, they found some stones, and in the stones, they found that uh, this language was transferred into another language, which said that the, the anointing oil was actually cannabis, and cannabis had to mean pot. And I said, show me that in the Bible. He said, that a King James Bible? I said, yeah. He says, not there. <laughs> knuckleheads. He, they need to take a, take a moment. And by the way, we're knuckleheads when we don't read the Bible. Amen. We're knuckleheads when we don't, we don't stop and study it. We're knuckleheads when we go to church and, and, and open our hearts and our minds to the preaching of God's word. Boy, it's important for us to hear. Verse 7, look at this. For my mouth shall speak truth. Wisdom is truth. Wisdom is truth. Say that with me. Wisdom is truth. The Bible says thy word is truth. This book is a book of wisdom. And it says and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. That's another side of it. But you know what our, our, our state needs? You know what our church needs? Righteousness. Where all of a sudden we listen and open our hearts and our minds to the right ways of the Lord. And righteousness exalteth a nation. And our nation has gotten so far away from righteousness. I was so glad Governor Yunkin was asked by a reporter and said, well, what about this marijuana bill? He said, I'm against it. I'm against it. I'm not going to vote for that. And, and man, I, you know what I said? I said, amen. Amen, I'm thankful for that. Because if we have a, a nation that has no laws or righteousness, and I believe righteousness comes from the word of God. And I'm thankful for that. It defines that. Uh, but wisdom says, wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. And there is nothing forward or perverse in them. Boy, you could go into a lot of things. There's a big difference between theories and truth, right? Remember, right, wisdom is truth, theories and truth. A lot of people have a lot of theories. But the Bible is not a theory book. It's a truth book. I found this, uh, this poem poem. I'm going to read it to you. And I just, if, if it was just the first line, I would like it. Theories abound, but God's truth is true. <laughs> Whoever wrote that, I don't know if it's grammatically correct, but I sort of like that first line. Theories abound, but God's truth is true. In a world of shadows, his word breaks through. Fleeting thoughts may falter, human wisdom stray, but the Lord's firm promise forever will stay. Hearts may wander, eyes may roam, yet amidst life's tempest, 
His truth is home. So let us cling to what is forever sure. In God's unchanging word, we stand secure. And boy, we need to stay to the truth right there. Look at verse number nine. They, wisdom, are all plain to him that understandeth. God, God's word is plain. You know, my, one of my kids uh, today, he said, Dad, uh, we were talking about solar energy. Matter of fact, we were talking about uh, what if uh, there is a world record for somebody who drives a car nonstop for the longest time? What would that be? And I don't know. And then all of a sudden we said, well, there would need to be a car that you didn't have to stop and get gas. So then we talked about, well, what about a solar-powered car? And uh, then all of a sudden there's a problem, a solar power car. One of my kids goes, what is solar power, Dad? And so I tried to explain that solar panels take sun and turn it into energy. And uh, all of a sudden uh, there would be a problem because a solar powered car, all of a sudden at nighttime, would have a problem because there's no sun. And we never figured it out. So somebody here probably knows that right there. But I was trying to explain solar power to my kid, and it's like all of a sudden he's like, oh, that makes sense. I don't know if it did make sense, but God, God's wisdom, it tells us right there uh, that it, it's plain to him that understandeth. It's not too complicated for us. When we seek that understanding, we're not leaning to our own understanding, but we're trying to find the ways of the Lord. He'll help you understand these truths. Look at verse number 10. Receive my instruction. Do you see verse 10? Receive my instruction and not silver, and knowledge rather than Choice gold, for wisdom is better than, I got an updated version, it says this, for wisdom is better than Bitcoin. <laughs> Just kidding right there, but Bitcoin is the big fad right now, but wisdom is better than Bitcoin. Uh, wisdom is better than rupees, and all the things that may be desired or not be, can be compared to it. You, you know, you, you have a treasure book right here. A glory book right here. The Bible is, is an amazing book. And praise the Lord, it's better than rubies, better than silver, better than gold, better than Bitcoin. Okay, good. I should have titled the, the sermon that, better than Bitcoin. Praise the Lord. Okay, look, look at verse number uh, 12. Oh, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord. Now, this is a verse you could study. The fear of the Lord we never respect for the Lord or reverence for the Lord. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Nothing wrong with hating evil. Yes. Hating pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the froward mouth. You know what I hate? I hate it when I, I do evil. I hate my pride. I hate my arrogancy. I hate it when I go in the evil way. I hate it when I am froward or I have a froward mouth. I do I hate Counsel is mine. This is talking about wisdom. Counsel is mine. Sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. Wisdom has strength. There's certain strength in wisdom. But when you have wisdom, it helps you see clearly. It helps you make good decisions. It helps you to understand some things. Often, we, we're in a frenzy. Uh, often, we're pulling out, well, I pulled out more hair than anybody else. And that must have came with a time I didn't have as much wisdom. Amen. And, uh, but but we, we all striving for wisdom right there, but there's strength in wisdom. Look at this, the power of wisdom. By me, kings reign. By wisdom, kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches. Look at verse 20. I lead, wisdom leads in the way of what? righteousness. Boy, that's an important one. This is the next section. Look at verse 22. 22 to 31 tells us about wisdom's relationship with God. And it's hard not to spend more time in this part because wisdom comes from God. Wisdom's been in the beginning with God. Look at this. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I, wisdom, was set up from everlasting. From the, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. Wisdom's been around a long time, and it comes from God. And this book of wisdom's been around for a long time, and it comes from God. There is a right way. So many people, well, it's good for me. This is good for me. No, it's not. You know what's good for you is the Bible way. 
Well, that's really straight and narrow. Yeah, it's straight and narrow, but it's God's straight and narrow. There, there's only one way to heaven. It's Jesus. And, and this, this book is truth. Not all religions are the same. Well, you have, you have so many different things. And, man, I, I can say that because I believe the Bible. The Bible teaches us there are lots of false ways. And, by the way, when we believe the Bible, which we believe, it, it tells us that hell is hot. Hell is forever. And when people don't trust Christ as their Savior, boy, they die and burn in hell forever and ever and ever and ever. Where'd you get that, Pastor? Well, I got it from this book of wisdom right here. It tells us that. Am I happy about it? No, I'm not happy about it. But it's true. People desperately need wisdom. Wisdom comes from God. Look at this. This is the, the last part of this. Look at verse 32. Now, therefore, because of all that was said before, because uh, wisdom's crying out, because it's better than silver and gold and Bitcoin, uh, because the simple can have it, because the fools can have wisdom, because wisdom comes from God, because wisdom has strength. Now, therefore, because of all that, hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they, blessed are they, blessed are they, say those three words with me, blessed are they that keep my ways, hear instruction, be wise. And refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me. Now, I, I put these two words in ultra bold. I don't know if you can see that. Do you see that? Watching daily. <laughs> okay, watching daily. Whenever you read this, you know you read a proverb a day. It helps you in a great way. You get to this, chapter number eight. You get close to the end, and then you notice it says, watching daily, watching daily. I wish it was a button I could push. Boop. Boop. I'm a wise man. And uh, you get it. But, but reality, watching daily, I need to be watching for wisdom daily. I need to be seeking wisdom daily. I need to be going to God to give me instructions, guidance daily, watching daily in his gates. I tell you what, don't take a week off of reading your Bible. You know what I've struggled with? Pastor, you struggle? Yeah, you, could, you, know, you know that. Man, I go out of town for two weeks. Feels like that. Man, I had me a routine. I was rip born top of the mountaintop. Woo! I get out of that schedule, and I have struggled putting the pieces of that together of a routine. And it, 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 there's a battle going on in the inside when I get away from my routine. Just being frank with you, I have that struggle. You know what the answer is? Wisdom. The answer is God. The answer is going to God, I need your help, Lord. I need your direction, Lord. I need to get back in that routine again. Praise the Lord. Well, I battled through it. I mean, I read my, uh, what, 12 chapters of the Bible this morning. I prayed this morning. I, I did uh, my little plan this morning. But man, there was a raging inside of me, a battle going on. I got my coffee this morning. Before I, read, before I drank my coffee, I read my proverb of the day. Amen. But there's a battle that rages in all and watching daily, daily, daily. Well, we have to somehow get that routine. Don't skip a day. Don't skip a week. Don't skip a month. Look at this, verse 35. For whoso findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. Verse 36, remember the loud man sitting next to me? I felt sorry for him. I'm not against him. Well, I told him, man, you'd be dangerous if you got on the right side of the Bible-believing Christianity. You'd be dangerous to the devil. But he that sinneth against me, wisdom wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. That poor guy. And I, I really feel sorry for him. He has a lot of money, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> he, you know, he told me, and I'm going to finish this. He said, I tripled my money last year. I did this investment. I said, I did better than that with my investments last year. He said, you did? I said, yeah. I said, what did you invest in? eternal wrenches up in heaven. That's what I told him. <laughs> you should have seen the look he gave me. But you know what? We have riches when we have that riches, but man, when people forsake the Lord, forsake wisdom, they love death. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. Thank you for the cry, the call of wisdom. Help us to hear. Help us to be reminded it's for everybody. It's for the simple. It's for the, it's even for the, the foolish Lord. Lord, help us to remember that wisdom is better than silver, better than gold, better than anything else, Lord. Help us remember it comes from you. It is truth. 
Help us to come daily for that wisdom, Lord. Help us to be guided by it. Help us to be a church filled with wisdom, but not just keeping that wisdom here in these four walls, but help us to spread that wisdom out in our homes and in our community. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.